Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of Jobek Today and I'm your host, Raymond Maruku. The land invasion in the city of Johannesburg has been a constant issue that will soon be a thing of the past. As the Jobek mayor, Mr. Herman Mashaba, announced that they will not tolerate the land invasion and his key priorities is to finalize the list of houses that have been built but not allocated in the next 90 days. Land invasion is a serious issue in the city of Johannesburg and Mayor Herman Mashaba stated that they will not tolerate any land invasion in the city and also that there will be plans implemented in future. Well, the thing is, if we don't uh, address it and address it now, uh, our people will invade land and once they've invaded land, it's going to be difficult or impossible for us as a city to be able to save this, this pieces of, of, of land. So we are asking our people, to please um, give us a break. We're only asking for 90 days for us to be able to compile a list because we cannot start the distribution or allocation of houses or stands when we don't have a credible list. So please just bear with us so that we can give you dignity. We have plans for us as a city to immediately work as a matter of agency to compile the list. We are busy working on, on, on stock of completed houses, some of them completed, some of them semi-completed in the city of Johannesburg throughout uh, the city. Within 60 days, uh, the housing department will give us uh, these houses to allocate. But pieces of land, what we're doing is we're working with the city manager and the finance department to see if we can identify these pieces of land and upgrade it. Put basic services like roads, water, electricity and sewer before our people can occupy those houses. Hillbro and the inner city, uh, next Thursday actually I'm meeting with all the property developers. We have... Um, Buildings in our city today that are standing empty, some of them uh, occupied, uh, hijacked by criminal elements. We want in the criminal elements in particular, please get out before we use the might of the law to get you out. Because we need these uh, structures with working with the private sector and developers to turn them into low cost housing, to turn them into commercial uh, spaces for people to, to come and live and work in the city center of Johannesburg. I'm Pumashiro with your work today. Follow us on Twitter, that's a Chobik Today, and like our Facebook page, that's ChobikToday.tv. It's almost summertime, and the city of Chobik is hard at work to ensure that Chobik Zoo's upgrade will be ready in time. Some of the parks around the city are also getting an upgrade. There's also a massive budget tree in place to take care of these treasures. Nashina, just to Dr. Van Heerden in studio. Today we're talking about Johannesburg's gems. Those are the parks and of course the zoos in a great city like Johannesburg. These are treasures. We're hearing that uh, the city of Joburg is busy with upgrades. So give us a sense of the extent of these upgrades. I mean, you're right. It is gems. The Johannesburg Zoo, for example, is already celebrating 112 years old. That is awesome. So it's fantastic. I mean, we all grew up visiting the Joburg yeah. Zoo. No, uh, it started in 1904. Um, and has been uh, a gem for the city ever since. Uh, as for the upgrades, you know, as Johannesburg City Parks and Zoo, we do a number of capital infrastructure development projects where we try and upgrade, we try and introduce new facilities to the citizens of the city. Um, you, would, you would understand or appreciate that uh, given our, the legacy of the past, we have more trees, more public open spaces, more parks in the northern suburbs of yeah. Johannesburg. And so for a number of years, we've been very focused on the south, yeah. trying to uplift the, the yeah. southwestern townships, um, stretching from Rivoli all the way into Soweto, Lanasia, and up to Orange Farm. And we do a number of projects in that regard. Um, so what kind of upgrades are we talking about? It really is, it, it varies from project to project. Uh, at the zoo, for example, we are currently busy, you know, we found that it's such a popular venue that we've been experiencing severe traffic congestion. Mm -hmm. We need to create more parking for our citizens. And so we are busy with a, a multi-million rand project in building a massive parking lot on Lower Park Road, which we feel is going to take care of some of the congestion. Look, and I've had issues with parking at the zoo as absolutely. well, so this is great absolutely. news. Yeah. And we want to take the opportunity to, to apologize for the inconvenience. You know, with these projects, unfortunately, as we build the parking lot, we are asking citizens to maneuver around the sure. zoo. Um, and it remains very popular. 
You know, yeah. people are parking at Zoo Lake. We've gotten a relationship with the with the War Museum, which is just adjacent yeah. to the to the zoo, so visitors can park there too. Um, but we feel that that particular project will probably be finished early next year. By March, April, we think that uh, the parking lot will be open to, Sounds to the Sounds great. Public. I mean, it's springtime. People it's want to go fantastic. out and enjoy It's going to be fantastic. We're parks. very excited about it. Uh -huh. Which are the, um, the most popular parks in Johannesburg as a matter of interest? Well, you know, we have over 2,000 parks as our portfolio as City Parks and Zoo. And out of that, unfortunately, we have to prioritize. Um, and so we, we've divided them into flagship parks, which about just over 40 flagship parks, um, then you have your developed parks. These are parks that have play, children play equipment in them, mm -hmm. and then your underdeveloped parks, usually generally public open spaces. People still use it for recreational purposes, but we've not put a lot of infrastructure in it. We've fenced it, we've mm -hmm. put a few benches, and that's about it. Mm -hmm. um, the most popular ones are our flagship parks, high density usage by the citizens. And here we're talking from Zoo Lake, Innisfree in Santon, we're stretching all the way to Tokoza Park mm -hmm. in Soweto, um, and a number of other flagship facilities mm -hmm. that we have. These are facilities that we attend to weekly. Yeah. Every seven days, we have people there cutting, pruning, keeping it clean and so forth. Our developed parks, uh, we spend uh, once a month. Mm -hmm. we, every 30 days, we have people there. And then the underdeveloped parks are over a 60-day, 90-day period. Give us a sense of the overall budget, the overall spend around the parks. What, is this, what spend are we talking about when it comes sure. to upgrades on an annual basis? And are you actually spending this money? As City Parks and Zoo, we, over the last, sort of on average, we have a budget of close to about 80 million rand which we then invest in capital infrastructure development. Uh, last year we were fortunate to have a little bit more than 100 million rand, which goes a long way in terms of park development, and perhaps the elections had something to do with that. Um, but this financial year, 16, 17 going forward, we have just under 90 million, which is a little bit less, but we make do with what we have. And that will go into, as I say, a whole plethora of, of upgrades that we are doing. Yo, what's up? It's Euphonic and you are watching Joburg Today. For more on the city, do check out our playlist. That's all for me, Ray, and the rest of the Joburg Today crew. It's goodbye.